All right, good morning. How's everybody doing? Made it to the end. This is my diehards. Thank you for being here. The final session of the HR Technology Conference. Big shout out to my friends way down there. I like that group, way in the side. Make some eye contact with you. How are you? Good group. Uh, I'm really, really excited about this session, uh, uh, the Ideas and Innovators session. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? The Ideas and Innovators session is a concept that uh, we didn't invent it. We started doing it uh, at our Health and Benefits Leadership Conference a couple of times where thought leaders, industry experts, just really smart people provide their uh, insights and expertise or crazy, wild, innovative, challenging ideas on all things HR, technology, work, the workplace, leadership, and more. And maybe some other things even we're, we're not expecting to hear at the HR Technology Conference, but it'll just make you think. We've got a great lineup of speakers uh, today who've waited patiently while we've worked through some stressful rehearsal time in the last hour or so. And just a couple of notes on what you'll see and how it works. We're using the Ignite format. Uh, it's a well-known speaking format. Anybody seen Ignite talks before in that format? Just the people who worked on these decks, it looks like. <laughs> Well, good, so you're in for a treat. Uh, the Ignite format is a fast-paced, rapid-moving, rapidly-changing format, but it's a very strict format. Each presenter has 20 slides. The slides will auto-advance every 15 seconds, <laughs> resulting in a total talk time of five minutes. So each speaker is only talking for five minutes. I've done Ignite a couple of times myself. I will say this, from, from an audience perspective, it's great because it's fast moving, it's changing. If, if one topic doesn't quite grab you and five minutes later there'll be a different speaker and a different topic, which is cool, it, it's awesome. Um, from a speaker's, per, speaker's perspective, it's quite possibly the longest five minutes of your life. <laughs> so many, many thanks to my speakers for doing this. this is, it, it's a bit of a risk as a speaker, it's a bit of a challenge, and I think the nature of it being a challenge is why this group of people stepped up and were willing to do it this year. So many thanks to them. One other quick technical note, and I'm saying this on behalf of the speakers. We learned a lesson today about consolidating multiple PowerPoint decks and keynote decks into one old laptop that didn't have a lot of custom fonts on it or wasn't quite prepared for all the really cool and elaborate things many of our speakers did. We did our best in the last hour to try to fix everything. You may see a slide or two that doesn't look perfect. The reason it doesn't look perfect is not your speaker's fault. Uh, it's, um, it's, I don't know, I was going to say it's my fault, but I really would. <laughs> I really don't want to take the blame for it. But all right, we'll say it's, uh, it's my fault and possibly Ed Chase's fault. One of our faults. All right, I think that's it for this. Let's, uh, let's switch the display to my deck up here if we could. All right, so I'm going to bring up the speakers one at a time. When they give me the high sign, I will kick it to their, their first slide, and then the countdown clock will begin. If the countdown clock somehow doesn't work, and we unfortunately didn't have a time to test every slide, I have the clicker speakers, and if I need to, I will click. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, home stretch now. Next up, I'm really excited to have this next speaker here. I'm so pleased she was able to join us. Please welcome Catherine Minshew, founder and CEO from The Muse. Catherine, welcome. Woo. Woo. You gotta do what? Thanks so much. Uh, Go ahead and start it up. You ready to go? I'm ready to go, here as ready go. as I'll ever be. So hey everybody, it's so great to be here. I'm Catherine Minshew, and I'm founder and CEO of a company called TheMuse.com. Since we launched in 2011, we've helped over 40 million people find careers they love through real workplace topics and an inside look into great companies and careers. So through our work with companies like Facebook, Uber, HBO, Bloomberg, Zappos, we've learned a lot about what makes a great company culture and how can culture help you hire and define your employer brand to get great candidates coming through your door. So I want to talk about that a little bit today, but I'm going to start with the problem. So 46% of new hires leave within the first year. 89% of hiring failures are due to poor cultural fit. And yet, in 2011 alone, businesses spent $45 billion recruiting just millennials. So if culture is at the core of this, what is culture? And so many people like to say, well, we have a ping pong table. We do happy hours. We have branded notebooks. I don't 
think culture is a ping pong table, and I hope you don't either. It drives me crazy when executives come to me and they say, Catherine, we can't compete with Google for hires. We don't have a slide. We don't have unlimited snacks. But let's be honest, slides and unlimited snacks aren't what people are drawn to when they decide to choose your company over the one next door, when they come to you over their competitors. So what are the rules for thinking about your culture? Rule one, define who you are so you know who you're not. When you bring together a team of individuals, what you're doing is essentially giving them a rubric for what they stand for, what their mission is, how they should behave. It's a shared set of values and beliefs that drive interactions and decision making within your company. And while being initiated onto a team may not be as exciting as becoming a Jedi Knight, I still think you can make people feel like they're being part of a, a superhero club. And so if you think about culture, you have the, the language, the beliefs, the words that make up why you're unique to your organization, there's these things called core values, which really become the decoder ring by which people can understand who they are and what they stand for. Think of it a little bit like a sonar call. When you find core values that are authentic to who you are, that are really baked into your organization's DNA, and you put them out there, it attracts whales who speak your language, and it saves you time scaring away so-called craplicants that may not be interested. This brings us to rule two. Communicate your core values internally and bring them to life. Just like with a product launch, solicit feedback from people on your team. Think about how to get people on board. Use the core values that exist there, not the ones you wish they would be. And hopefully it's a little bit more jazzy than something that Michael Scott might do in the office. Then, once you have your core values, use them as part of the interview process. Help make sure your employees know this is what we want to hire against. This is what we want to celebrate in people we bring onto the team. And you can use it in employee recognition. When you have a clear, defined set of core values, things that you hire for, you fire for, and you celebrate, you can use it as well, because skill and culture is what makes people successful. So baking core values into your promotion strategy can be incredibly powerful. And finally, this is where it gets fun. Showcase your culture externally and give your team a reason to show off. Once you've got a great culture, it's time to make sure people know it. And I think this brings out an important analogy, which is that these days, marketing is to your product as employer branding is to your company culture. Just as a phenomenal product still needs great marketing to find the right audience, so too it doesn't matter how great your company culture is if people who could be great potential hires don't know about it. And that's where I think employer branding comes in. For me, it's really about storytelling, showing, not telling, tapping that desire in people to tell their personal stories and get others on board. Look at your own company career page. Does it sell the story of your company culture in the same way that you might sell your products? At The Muse, we do this through photo and video, so this is an example of one of our profiles of MailChimp. We like to use big pictures and high resolution videos of employees talking to really take you inside. What is your life like if you work at this company? What sort of person is going to be excited? And once you have the assets to do that, it's time to own your story. Don't just tweet about your job listings. Think about all of your social channels, your blog, your employees. How do you own your story and share that with people out there who would be great additions to your team? Ultimately, when you think of your employees like a community, they can become your best evangelists when only given the right tools. It's not a question of if, but when. Your employees are already talking about their jobs, your company, and their lives on social media. So make sure they have the words and the framework to express that. And ultimately, when you do that, I think you get to the core of all of this, which is that when you have a great company culture that's authentic to you, and you have the tools to talk about it, you become part of your employee's personal story. You become part of the way that they talk about their jobs, their lives on social media. And I think that there's nothing more powerful than that. So thank you so much, and have a great All afternoon. All right, thank you. Catherine, thank you so much. That was great. You can exhale. Longest five minutes of your life, was it? Yep. That, I love that, too. I love two Star Wars resets in 20 slides. Awesome. All right. A couple of quick things for me. First off, thank you to our nine speakers. I feel like now we're in the club. We have nine new best friends. HR Tech Ignite Veterans, Ideas and Innovators Veterans. Huge round of applause for our speakers again today. I had thought, I had thought, wrapping up the conference, I would have said going in that the hackathon, the HR Tech hackathon we did yesterday, that was my favorite session of the conference. Now it's my second favorite. This was my highlight of the conference for me personally. So thank you so much.
I just want to say a couple quick things. First of all, thank you to all our attendees for being here. Now, obviously, this conference is for you. We hope you had a great experience. We hope, of course, to see all of you back next year in Chicago for a change, and I think that's going to be exciting and fun. So hope to see many of you again next year in Chicago. Second, I want to thank uh, conference co-chair Dave Shadowitz. I want to thank the team that puts on this show and executes the show, Ed Chase, Vicki Dennehy, Craig Lutman, and the whole team, I can't name them all. They do a great job for you, for our attendees, for our exhibitors, and for our speakers. So many thanks to the team at LRP for another great job. I had a great experience here again this year. I hope you did too. Please let us know what you think. Please fill out your feedback forms. We want to get better. We want to make this conference relevant for you and help you and your organization succeed. So with that, I say thank you, and I'm officially closing the 18th HR Technology Conference. We will see you next year in Chicago. Thank you.